Last time I showed you how to build an XY table for a wood router. I used this to mill my wood slab pieces so that I could make tables out of them. I sanded them, removed the bark, uh, added some uh, clear petroleum based uh, caulking to the cracks in the bottom uh, so that the two part epoxy won't run out when I do the top pour. Today I'm going to show you my method for adding two part epoxy to a punky cracked wood slab. Before I do that though, I want to cover something I forgot to mention in the last video. Uh, the importance of not overstressing the router bit. Uh, I mentioned that if the bit is taking off too much material, either too fast or too deep or the cut is too wide, there's the possibility that the bit will bend or break. This will gouge the workpiece, which requires another cut to be made uh, once the bit is replaced. How can you tell if the cut is too aggressive? Listen. As you're making the cut, the bit will sing in one part harmony. Pitch goes down as the, uh, the cut gets more aggressive. If the cut gets too aggressive, it starts to sing in two part harmony and sound angry. That angry sound is actually the shaft wiggling inside the tool. It's actually wiggling inside the chuck. Even though the, uh, the, the collet may be as tight as you can make it, this shaft is still wiggling and it's making that sound take a look here you can see there that damage that is caused by the tool wiggling back and forth inside the chuck that is what's making that sound now before the bit breaks it'll start to wiggle out of the chuck you won't notice as you move back and forth moving from one side to the other but when you move from side to side to clear off any high spots you'll miss then you'll find that the bit may be cutting deeper on the starting side than on the finishing side. So with that out of the way, let's go back to filling cracks and holes with two-part epoxy. Um, because the material wants to sink into the wood, I have to build a dam around the edge of the piece that I'm pouring. And I have to make sure that the piece that I'm pouring is sitting flat. There are a number of ways to do this. Here's what I've tried so far. Painter's tape sucks. The, the uh, two-part epoxy will seep out. It'll find the, the holes, the, the, the cracks, the, the spaces between the, the tape and the wood and seep through it and leak. Duct tape. Better, still sucks. Still the same problem. I tried silicone caulking. Much better sticks to the, the, uh, the wood very well, too well in fact. Once the pour is finished, getting that stuff off is, is impossible without sanding it off. I can cut off the excess, but then it has to be sanded down uh, so that I don't leave a white streak beside the, uh, the crack that I just filled. I could go back to the, uh, the Lexel that I used, uh, the, uh, the clear petroleum based material. Uh, but that has a, uh, a rubbery feel, and it, it's not exactly perfect for, for uh, furniture. So then I tried hot glue, and by gosh, does hot glue ever work well? Hot glue will stick to the wood and keep the material from running out, but when it's time to remove it, it just pulls off because it's a piece of plastic. Let's go to the shop and I'll show you. So here's the piece I'm going to be working with today. You can see along the top here, there are some cracks that go right to the edge and down. This one goes down all the way to the bottom and actually has a crack underneath that I've filled. So in order to make sure that the two-part epoxy that I put on the top doesn't leak down and through, I need to fill these cracks 
with hot glue. Once the glue has cooled, check the uh, inside the pore area for any glue stringers, remove those, and uh, next step is to do the pore. So since we have a piece here that is oblong, what I'm going to do is measure the longest uh, x value, the longest y value, average those two, and uh, come up with a circle diameter, and do the volume calculations that way.